Hello everyone. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, this is pretty fascinating. I'm actually taking the power from Tesla's charging port all the way to this device and I'm powering up an air fryer, an oven, powering up a space heater here, all with the Tesla's high voltage battery system. So this is a vehicle to load device, V2L device, that takes the power from your Tesla's high voltage battery and makes you usable power so that you can plug in your appliances, small appliances like an oven or a space heater or a water heater. You can do that on the go. So if you're out in camping site and you want to be able to power more energy intensive devices like this, this supports all the way up to 3.6 kilowatt, uh, 15 amp each from this port. So giving you a total of 30 amp from this little device. And how this works is just like how a solar system works. In solar, you can't just connect the solar panel directly to any of this stuff because it doesn't work that way because it is throwing a DC charge. So what this does is that it takes the DC charge just like solar panels and then converts it into AC using this inverter. So this is basically an inverter, a smart inverter because Tesla wouldn't just let us use that. Tesla does that for other uh, vehicles such as a cyber truck, uh, but Tesla hasn't opened that up for the rest of the vehicles such as a Model Y or a 3 or as an Axon. This works for all of those vehicles, even the older vehicles. This works for that purpose where you are actually getting the DC from the large high voltage battery, converting into AC and then powering it on for various devices. Before we get started with today's video, I wanted to thank everyone who entered for last week's giveaway where we're giving away an instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. We got an overwhelming support from every one of you. We had over 284 entries on that giveaway. So thank you everyone who participated. Congratulations to username at HRSD for winning that giveaway. We're gonna do a lot more Tesla accessories giveaway in the future. So now would be a great time to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss any of our giveaways or any of the Tesla's future videos. Let's continue. This is what you get with the kit. Um, you'll get some instructions manual, which I highly recommend you read through, make sure that you understand what to do, what not to do. They give you clear instructions on pressing the button, waiting, all of that. So extremely important for a device like this. Um, Hansho sends you their regular marketing blurb and you know QR codes to scan and whatnot. They give you the address, the phone number, all of that good stuff. Um, and then you all have the device itself. So this is what it looks like. Here you have got a two AC port. There is a power button there. There's fans inside in the back. You can see it. There is an input here. I'll show you what that does in just in a second. It gives you all the parameters on the side. And if you were to flip it over on this unit, you're gonna see two USB-A ports. Uh, you can probably charge your stuff using this or do software update uh, in the future. And then of course you have got a NAC connector that we're gonna plug this in. So this is what the device looks like. Now, I just checked their website and their website shows a better one that actually has a screen on the side. So they're probably gonna ship that one out. This has been sitting in my garage for a while. Um, I haven't had a chance to do a review yet. So this is probably their version one and they already have a version two. But the, the characteristic and everything, the idea is exactly the same. They just have a little bit more accessories like front ports here with USB-C and whatnot, which is better, but it's exactly the same on what this does. They send you USB-A to USB-A, again, to extend that from the bottom. They send you a little flash drive. This is so that you can run software update in the future. So if Tesla doesn't update and this does not work anymore, uh, instead of being paperweight, they promise that they will release a software update. Uh, do this at your own risk, but they do say that they will do a software update and they even send you a flash drive to download that update. And, and then they send you a DC adapter. So this goes into the car cigarette uh, port. If you have Model 3, it's in the front. If you have Model Y, you have one in the back too. And then this just plugs into the DC port in the back. And the reason why you have that is in case when you ship this out and it arrives and when you press on the button, nothing happens, that means this is completely dead. It has a battery inside to let the electronics work because this has its own computer, this has its own fan and all of that. And if this is completely dead, th this device is not gonna work. So what you do is in that case, you plug into the car's DC adapter, the cigarette lighter port, and then power this on and let it charge for a little while. And then when you press on the button here, then you'll see the indicator turn on and off. 
you are going to need to do that. Make sure that there is a power here before you connect this to the car. Uh, that's basically it. Let's go ahead and test it. This product was sent to us free of charge by Hanso at hautopart.com. We have reviewed a lot of products from them in the past. Even though the cost shows that it is over $1,100, if you put our discount code Shiva Tesla during checkout, you save about 200 and some dollars, bringing the total to under $1,000. Is this worth it? I'll let you be the judge after watching today's video, but I do want to let you know that that is an affiliate code. So we do earn a very small commission at no additional cost to you, which greatly helps us bring videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. Let's get started. All right, so how does this work? First, don't plug in anything here. Just let it sit like this. Press this power button once. You're gonna see a red light, steady red light. This needs to turn into a yellow light. So just let it sit for a little bit. What it is doing is it's powering on all the electronics, everything inside to make sure that this device is ready to go. It got to initiate the fan and everything. So it is going to take you a little bit. So now it turned yellow. That means this is ready to take in the charge from Tesla. Now you take this over here, you open the charge port and you plug this in. Now, as soon as you plug it in, you'll see a blue solid, blue flashing and now green flashing and this is green. That's it. The communication has been established. This is green flashing. This is steady green. Now this device is ready to power anything else you got. Now to stop this process, make sure everything is unplugged already. All you have to do is press and hold on this power button for about five, six seconds. And once you do that, you can let go. It's gonna start flashing blue. Your Tesla will make a noise showing that it is white here, steady white. This is flashing blue. Then you can go ahead and press on the button here in the middle and unplug this. And this is going to be a solid yellow. That is going to stay yellow for about 30 seconds and it's going to turn off. The entire process is done. All right, let's do some testing here. We have got a water heater. Um, we have got an oven here. Now this is steady yellow. So this is ready to go. Now we're just going to open this up and then plug it in. Just going to take a second. It recognizes it really quickly. This is good to go, it's green. Now, first, let's turn on the water heater. We just have to plug it in, and this needs to be turned on. If you see the blue light there, that is good to go. So that is going, and it is working. I don't know if you can see the blue light. It's a little bit bright here. Now, we're going to bring in the oven, and then plug it into the other port here. So open and this turn on and we can say air fryer that is off, air fryer and this is going now. So we have got an air fryer and the water heater going at the same time. So what is happening here is this is discharging, it shows it is charging from that cable coming to this inverter here. We are plugged in with two AC appliances. One is this water heater that is, as you can see, is boiling. And then you have got a air fryer that is going as well, which is pretty cool. Now all through the Tesla's charger. So you can get all of that through the high voltage Tesla battery, which is really cool. Now, while this is going here, let's go inside and see what is happening to the Tesla. As you look at it, it shows that we are using three kilowatt. Probably the draw is not as high, but it does show that you're using three kilowatt. And it thinks that, it's tricks into thinking that this is charging. And it says 35 minutes remaining. There is no way it is gonna charge in 35 minutes. This is just 28% with zero uses. But it thinks that you're gonna charge in 35 minutes because it thinks you are doing a DC fast charge, CCS charge, which would be about 35 minutes uh, to get to like 80%, I think, uh, if it is a DC fast charge. And how do I know this is if I go to software here and you tap right here and hold for a little bit. Now put service, S-E-R-V-I-C-E. -E. This is what Tesla service would see. Go enter and we're going to see the status. If I go to high voltage here and if I go to charging, not that one, if I go to charging, if you look at it, it says CCS a station 345 volt DC. So the device is tricking Tesla into believing we're doing a DC fast charge at 345 volt at 10 amp. That is why at 345 volt, 
it, it should take 35 minutes to get to 100%. So that's, that's what this device is tricking Tesla into believing. So for Tesla's purposes, Tesla doesn't even know that this device exists because of this. It thinks that you plugged it into a CC as a station and you're fast charging your car. So this is why it is important that your car must be from 20 to like 99%. It can't be 100%. They ideally recommend somewhere from 20% to like 95%. Uh, the reason is because if it is at 100%, Tesla is not gonna charge no more. It's gonna stop charging. That means it's not gonna discharge either because this device is tricking it into charging it. So 100% is just gonna stop. So it's not gonna work. And below 20%, Tesla is gonna reserve all of that stuff for other electronics. So you sh it is advisable. Even if it works, you shouldn't do that below 20%. But for now, this is, this is what you see. Tesla believes that you are at a DC fast charge. Look at that. <laughs> The water is fully boiling here. That is what it's doing with just the Tesla here coming into power. So once you plug this device in, you're gonna notice that the car is gonna get really loud. I took out my mic so you can hear the car got really loud because it is actively heating up the battery because it thinks you're DC fast charging. That means it's going to waste energy trying to heat up the battery when it doesn't really have to because we're not really charging the battery, we're discharging the battery. So it thinks that you are fast charging the battery, that's why it turns on all the conditioning of the battery. Now to stop that from happening, let me show you what you can do in the service mode. Now to toggle this off, you can go to service menu and use the service setting and go toggle this setting where it says active battery heating. You can toggle this off so the car doesn't heat up your battery while charging. Now, as you can see, this is charging and discharging and we do not hear any fan going off because we toggle that setting. You have to stay in the service mode with that setting off. Now, this is one of those things where there is a setting. I know how to get to it. I just showed you how you can toggle that on and off doesn't mean it's good for your battery. There is a reason Tesla put that setting in a service menu because this is supposed to be toggled on and off by Tesla service employee. In this situation, it makes logical sense. You are discharging the battery, so might as well turn off the battery preconditioning because you are not uh, putting the charge into your Tesla's battery. You are removing the charge from your Tesla's battery. But that doesn't always mean it's a good thing for the battery. So. My challenge to Hanshu is to figure out a way where the battery preconditioning doesn't happen automatically and it stays as a recommended setting so we don't have to go to service menu and toggle this on or off uh, because again, I do not feel comfortable toggling settings on the service menu. I like seeing things on the service menu, but not toggling things. So here's the verdict. Really innovative solution, outside of the box thinking. This is not your typical Tesla accessory we review in the channel. This allows you to be able to power your larger energy intensive appliances, tools, uh, anything like a water heater while you are out that you wouldn't typically be able to do from the cigarette lighter port inside your Tesla because that is just 12 volt. This is 120 volt. You can grab 15 amp from each of these ports. Uh, I wish Tesla would just make that a feature with any other Tesla, just like the Cybertruck where Cybertruck can do home backup. It, Tesla doesn't natively support that from this port for Model Y or Model 3. Uh, I wish Tesla did that, but is glad to see that the companies like this are coming up with a solution where they are allowing us to tap into the Tesla's high voltage battery because that's a giant battery pack there that can be used for other purposes as well while not in use. It's also very small, very portable. You can just leave this on your trunk and take it anywhere you go. Um, it has the NAC adapter, so you don't need an extra adapter on top of this. Uh, this does trick the Tesla into thinking it is DC fast charging. So Tesla doesn't know that you are discharging uh, because that is not allowed on a Model Y. So it, it has all of those components and overall a really great and innovative product if you have the need for it. Um, just outside of the box thinking again. It does not support 240 and I hope that they are making a solution where we can tap into the 240 fast charging with this as well because this is just 120 right now. It would be amazing if we could do 240 so that you can have a Tesla side by side and if one of your Tesla is about to die, you can fast charge your Tesla, you know, 30, 40 miles per hour just using this device here. So. That is another need from this. Now, one big question I always have reviewing this third-party company products is what if Tesla 
changes their software and updates the software and this device no longer work because they block anything that has been plugged in here. Um, so I asked that to Hanshow and they said that Tesla allows us to charge at a CCS charging station like using the CCS adapter or any DC fast charging and this is essentially doing the same thing. It has a computer inside that emulet that you are charging at a DC fast charge. So Tesla may not be able to recognize the difference between a DC fast charge versus this device. So, so they told me that this may not break with Tesla software upgrade because you are allowed to charge that DC fast charging. Another thing they said is that if that does happen with future software update with Tesla, they will update this computer. There is a computer inside. They will update that um, based on what Tesla changed on their codes with the software upgrade and make this device working again. Now, I would say that Hanso has followed through in the past with instrument cluster displays, rear displays, things like that when there is a software update on the Tesla and then it stops working because it shows weird battery signs or something in the instrument cluster display. They do send a software patch after reading what Tesla had changed because they can read that through the OBD port and then update that. Now they have done that in the past and, and it has worked. That doesn't mean that this won't break with future Tesla update and I don't know how quickly they will be able to resolve it. I want it to be 100% transparent. This was sent to me free of charge but you are paying money into it so I would highly recommend you do your research and feel comfortable with the company and the product that even if Tesla software update breaks it, you are willing to take that risk in the future. Now what about warranty implications? Since this is not an official Tesla product and a lot of products that we review in our channel are not officially approved by Tesla. Generally speaking, I have never had issues with Tesla accessories or mods, uh, even when I take it to the service center with those installed. As long as they do not cause any damages to the Tesla system, I think you are fine. But I wanna be fully transparent that I do not know if this particular device is gonna have any warranty implications. I reached out to Hanshu asking the same question, and this is the response that I got. Now I think they are just thinking through on how this would have warranty implication, and this is the answer they came up with. I would take this as a grain of salt and do your own research and be willing to take the risk. I'm willing to take that risk on myself because this is my job to show you what is out there and test all those accessories for you. But just wanted to make it very clear that I am not liable for any damages or warranty implications that might have on this device if you decided to get it. Please do your own research, maybe even reach out to Tesla, but that is the truth here. I don't know if it's gonna have warranty effect or not. Generally speaking, from my past experience, I've never had any issues with Tesla with the third party modifications like this. And finally, the cost. It is somewhere in the $900 mark with my discount code. Um, if you're just getting this to charge your phone outside, maybe not worth your money because you can charge your phone inside just as easily. But this does allow you to take advantage of the system to power your appliances, water heater, things like that while you're on the go. Um, you can run a coffee maker using this, a blender using this, all those high energy intensive uh, appliances you can use using this device. So if you need that and if you can justify the cost, this is a great product. But my job here is to just show you what it does where to get the product, all the discount code and everything, but ultimately it is your decision if this is worth it for you or not. So what do you all think about this device? Would you get it for your Tesla, your use cases, your likes, your dislikes? Anything you wanna let me know, please drop those in the comment section below. Any questions that you have that I can pass it on to hand show. All of those, please drop in the comment section below. Also extremely important if you engage with our videos, likes, share, comment, anything you do helps us rank higher in YouTube's algorithm. That means we can make more and more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. I'll be back soon.